So recently, I got a robotic vacuum cleaner. Uh, so it's the i7 uh, Roomba from iRobot. It's quite a mouthful to remember. And one of the features of that, uh, of which of course I'll be doing a video on later, is the fact it uses landmarks within the room using its camera to figure out, well, basically where it is in the room. And so that got me thinking, I probably need to use something like IFTTT, so if this then that, in order to have the light switch on when it starts a cleaning job so it can see where it's going. But then I realised, do I want it to switch the lights on at any point during the day, just because it's starting? Probably not. And so with that in mind, I kind of thought, what a great opportunity to use the IFTTT Pro uh, subscription that I now have uh, to create a multi-step app, essentially only switching the lights on if it happens to know that sunset has occurred. And so the rest of this video is going to take you through that particular example. I hope it's useful to you, and let me know how you get on with your uh, multi-step apps as well. So let's start by creating our own applet. So within the IFTT interface, you have the ability to go and create a new applet, and this is the screen that you're presented with. Now, uh, having done this a few times using the new IFTTT Pro subscription, I recommend doing the if statement first, so step one that you can see here, and then actually going straight to step four, so the, the kind of resulting action, the then that. Once you've got those two, you can then start to do the more complicated uh, multi-step piece that's uh, in the middle. So what we're going to do is we're going to click on the word add and then go off and find the Roomba service. So when you click on F, it's going to give you a number of different uh, services that you look at. I typed O robot and as you can see here, here is the button that we need to click on to connect to that Roomba service. It's worth noting I've already connected to the Roomba service. You would be prompted to put in your details if this is the first time that you've used it. So these here are all the triggers. Uh, as you can see, there's a number of them. So we're going to go with robot started because we want to start performing an action or do a query and some filtering based on the fact that the Roomba has started to clean a room. So once we've selected that trigger, it's then going to ask me for the robot name. Harry is something my son came up with. So I've selected Harry and then I click on create trigger. So once that trigger is created, I then want to go and set up the then piece, so the action. Um, I'm not going to go through it in the screenshots here, but you can see I've done then in hue, set a scene in a room. And so my scene in this instance sets most, if not all, of the lights downstairs into a very bright white. So here's where the new functionality comes in. By clicking on that little plus between the if and the then, you're going to be presented with a new um, uh, two new options. So these are the two new options that are included as part of the IFTTT Pro subscription. And so we're going to do both a query and then a filter on that query to then decide if it's going to trigger uh, the rest of the applet. So I click on Add Query and the next thing it's going to bring me up is a set of services that I can go and do that query on. So for my example here, I'm going to use Weather Underground. The reason I want to do that is actually I want to go and get what time sunset is or even better kind of understand if sunset has occurred. If sunset has occurred, I'm going to make sure the lights switch on for the Roomba. If sunset hasn't occurred yet in the location I'm in, then I don't need to worry about it and I don't need to put the lights on. So here inside the Weather Underground service, I can see all the data or the query that I can make uh, to the Weather Underground service. I'm going to go for current weather because that will show me, amongst other things, both the sunset and sunrise times. Interestingly enough, a lot of them appear to be have this history of kind of uh, piece as well. So it'd be interesting to see how far back for some of these services I can actually grab data from. So not only is it raining today, but has it rained in the last week? Next thing I do in the one weather underground service is you actually have to tell it your location. So type in your location, make sure it's correct on the map, and then click on create query. So you can see here now it's created that with line. So it's gone off and grabbed the current weather data 
and in particular the sunset time. Now what I want to do is, is filter or do like some logic or some checking on that. And I'll start that off by clicking that little plus button underneath the width line. So the next thing I'm going to do here is click on add filter. And that's because I want to perform some logic on that information that I've just grabbed in the width line. It's worth noting it looks like you can add several queries. So actually before I perform the logic, do I want to not only grab um, whether it's sunset, but also ask Tado whether I'm at home or not and perform a different action or, or go through a different set of logic depending on whether I'm uh, in the house or whether I'm out of the house. So this is actually where it gets pretty technical I think. So currently any of the filtering or the decision making is done pretty much through code. It does prompt you and there are some other areas on this page to give you an idea of what you can type. Uh, but for now, there's no GUI element to this. It's pretty much type the code and, and figure it out yourself. So this code here basically says if the current time is less than uh, the time returned by weather underground for sunset, then basically skip the hue action, uh, i.e. don't switch on the lights. It's worth noting actually down further on the page gives you a good idea of the kind of uh, query results that could have come back, some of the triggers that you can use and some other information. So they're all good if you don't inherently know what kind of functions you can call. Uh, but again, none of this is GUI so for now it's kind of you have to know what you're doing coding wise. So once I've saved my code, I kind of come back into this uh, create your applet screen. And the next thing I want to do is move to kind of naming the applet. In this example, we're going to call it lights on Vahari. We're going to click the save or the complete or the finish button and we're pretty much done. So hopefully this helps you get started on creating your own IFTTT Pro multi-step applet. There is certainly a, a steep learning curve uh, going from straight from the GUI interface into uh, the code. I personally think that has both an advantage and a disadvantage. So for someone like myself who doesn't have a lot of coding experience, it's it's quite a steep learning curve and it's something I'm going to get you uh, need to get used to. But actually, one could say that if you're going down the route of having a multi-step applet, you're probably getting quite advanced anyway and actually the GUI might restrict you and so where I think they need to go with this is almost a combination of both uh, GUI and code so that you can kind of flip between the two but all or most of it uh, or all or most of your logic in through using the GUI and then just finesse it a little bit in code where you needed to. Let me know how you get on be really interested to see if you find some uh, interesting kind of bits of code that you can use. Please share them uh, as always in the comments. Uh, share this video with anybody that you feel might find it useful as well. And all as always, if you haven't already, click on the subscribe button. You'll be able to find out more videos that I'm producing in the near future on IFTTT Pro uh, and a number of other um, home automation services as well. Thank you.